Hi guys, thanks very much for watching my videos. I made this video earlier, but I feel the need to remake it and I'll tell you why. It's because it was looking up at me too much and uh, it seemed to display that I had an enormous set of breasts, which is not a good thing for a man my age. I'm gonna have to work on that. A bit of cardio, I think. <laughs> not good. Um, as you know, this is a shameless self-promotion, this video. Um, I have for about a year now been working on writing a book about the Jehovah's Witnesses but it's not your typical you know here's what they believe thing and here's all the evidence of why they're wrong because we, we've all done that we've all we all know it you know it was done by Raymond Franz it was even done by people before him and uh, I think that the ship has sailed on the proof <laughs> the Jehovah's Witnesses are full of shit so I wanted to write an experience in a funny way about uh, my life as a Jehovah's Witnesses uh, the things I experienced uh, a little bit about what we all sort of our collective experience and it's going to be called The Great Apostate. So that's right, I can write a book. Uh, my, my attitude is, why be a reluctant apostate when you can be a great one? So uh, with that, uh, if you're still here and listening, I'm going to read you a little excerpt. Uh, and this is by way of, of tempting you, of getting you excited about the prospect, so that hopefully uh, when the time comes, which will be about, I think, early to mid-November, that uh, the book will come out and you'll buy it. And then if it does well, I will be able to do some cool things, some Jehovah's Witness related things, and possibly get a holiday. Who knows? So, with no further ado, this chapter, a little bit of it, is entitled Never Ending Meetings. One thing I can't possibly overemphasize about the life of a Jehovah's Witness is this. The constant never ending meetings are boring. The Bible is only one book. Well, 66 small books, unless you're a Mormon, then you get to read it all over again, as seen through the eyes of Joseph Smith, a convicted fraudster who somehow managed to make his own version even more boring than the original. But I'll leave the ex-Mormon community to pick up the low-hanging fruit that is the madness of their cult. We didn't just have the Bible to study, of course. We had the never-ending supply of literature that poured out from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania like paper slurry. We studied it at every meeting, and then again and again, and sometimes, like the Revelation, its grand climax at handbook, one more time just for good measure. But somehow, no matter what they wrote, it was almost always deadly dull. I really tried to learn from this spiritual feast, and was pretty good at studying the material beforehand. I'd always have an answer or two written in my own words, though that was mostly to prevent my mum from pinching me under the fatty bit in my arm. In the Kingdom Hall, Violence against children was, and still is, strongly encouraged. It was a rare meeting indeed if some parent wasn't trailing a screaming child out of the back room to administer a swift beating for such terrible crimes as talking or fidgeting or drawing in the margins of the magazines. As the parent beat that howling child, the other adults would smile and nod, as if to say, that's what you get. And I mean it when I say a child. I remember kids from one family in my hall being beaten at nearly every meeting when they were only five or six. My parents didn't approve of this though, it was too showy. My mum was a nipper. She would sit next to me and if I hadn't answered after a while she would begin to nudge me and then point out suitable answers in the upcoming paragraphs. I would ignore her, not wanting to answer at all or possibly just not wanting to answer her question and then that was when the nipping started. Mum would reach her arm over your shoulder in a friendly, loving way, and then insinuate her fingers between my torso and arm. Then she would grab a chunk of flesh and twist, causing intense pain to me and my brother, but managing to also look loving and motherly. This was usually enough to convince me to answer, and I was then rewarded with her warm smile. Hang on one sec. And I was then rewarded with her warm smile. It was a sort of smile that said to me, I'm proud of you, son. But what's more important is Jehovah's proud of you and you get to live next week. That was just one of the things that made me feel bathed in love with the meetings. When I wasn't trying to understand the nonsense written in the Jehovah's Witness publications or trying to force my arms to stay vice-like against my body to avoid a painful nipping, I was daydreaming. I'd imagine stories where I was the hero in the congregation, saving all my brothers and sisters and finally proving my worth and getting the love and appreciation of all. I'd look up at the roof tiles above the speaker and use an 8x8 grid to imagine and play imaginary chess. Playing imaginary chess is incredibly hard to do. Few people can even visualise the board with all the pieces, let alone move the pieces on both sides and keep track of the game as it progresses. You can try. I'll, I'll wait. It's not easy. I got about 8 moves in. 
I loved chess and had played it long before I could even read. In fact, one of my old principals in kindergarten back in Canada used to play chess with me and sometimes I beat him. The big problem with chess, mental or otherwise, was not that it was hard for me but that it was against the rules. Chess was a war game and therefore not something a true Christian should be wasting their time with. In fact, if you made it too obvious that you played the game, you could virtually guarantee a visit from the local elders for a lecture about the dangers of war games and we Christians must learn war no more. I always thought this argument was incredibly stupid for a few reasons. Number one, no government has ever declared war and then said, quick, where's the local chess club? We need generals. No, we don't need a tank driver. We need someone who can explain castling to us. Can I, can I do it if I move my king? <laughs> Two, chess is about as effective way as learning how to operate on a modern battlefield as the game operation is for teaching young doctors to perform open heart surgery. Three, chess is beautiful and artistic and clever and playing it makes people smarter which is something most Jehovah's Witnesses desperately need to be. So I played invisible chess above the head of a man with no authority who was talking to an invisible God who sees everything. I think this is a pretty fitting way to waste your time in a kingdom hall. Another thing I did was learn the lyrics of rap music I loved. I can still see it now. I think we'll leave it at that point. Guys, I hope you like it. I hope uh, when the book comes out that you'll buy it and review it and say good things. Uh, and if you, you know, if you don't say good things, keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Have a good evening.